Uh, well, with regard to our panel, which is on the ecosystem of the Internet and the role that ICANN has in it, uh, we've made enormous progress in understanding uh, the nature of that ecosystem and some of the um, mechanisms that we think would be beneficial to institute uh, in order to help others understand both the nature of the ecosystem and also to understand uh, how we can uh, make use of that ecosystem to instantiate a true multi-stakeholder model for policy development in the spaces that uh, ICANN is responsible for and, frankly, more generally. So let me begin by observing that the ecosystem of the Internet is extremely diverse. There are so many different parties that have an interest in it, whether it's on the user side, the production side, the transmission side, physical equipment, software, uh, products and services, uh, oversight, regulation, in some cases where we're talking about telecom, for example. It's just an incredibly diverse set of institutions, including governments. So you should start out by having a picture that there is this constellation of organizations that uh, have an interest in the Internet. The second thing is that they interact with each other and they often have pairwise mutual interests of one kind or another and in some cases those mutual interests uh, are actually made manifest by agreements that are struck. An example of this would be ICANN having an agreement with the top level domain operator, a registry agreement or maybe the registry and the registrar uh, have an agreement which is uh, generally outlined by uh, ICANN to in incorporate certain uh, requirements. Um, ICANN has a specific uh, affirmation of commitments with the U.S. government through the National Telecommunications and Information Agency as another form of, uh, of recognition of mutual responsibilities. So uh, the panel on ecosystem observes both this diversity and geographic spread uh, and variation in terms of the kind of interest. If you think of the Internet as a layered structure with physical infrastructure at the bottom, then sort of logical structures like Internet addresses and domain names, and then content and applications, and then behavior, which is social level things, th these uh, layers uh, often are populated by um, institutions and organizations that have a focus, say, within the layer or sometimes crossing layer boundaries. Uh, an example of my company at Google is we cross all layers because we offer uh, social uh, services through Google Plus and, and we are down in the guts of the uh, delivery systems uh, building gigabit networks in Kansas City, for example. So some institutions span all the various layers of the basic Internet architecture and some are much more focused. ICANN, for example, is largely focused uh, in a basic uh, logical layer where it's dealing with the Internet addresses and domain names and the parameters of the Internet protocols. The um, outcome of the panel discussion so far uh, suggests that a lot of these relationships ought to be more visible. They should be documented uh, in some form. And we became very attracted to the uh, affirmation of commitments arrangement between ICANN and the U.S. government. There are several reasons why this is an attractive mechanism. For one thing, it's a mutual recognition of responsibility. So it's not like somebody's in charge. It's more a question of saying to the other, I recognize your responsibilities and I also recognize mine and I commit to uh, meeting them. Uh, we thought to augment um, this sort of uh, reciprocal arrangement by saying in addition to the statements about recognizing uh, respective roles and responsibilities, that we also ought to have some way of dealing with accountability so that if one of the parties in an arrangement fails to meet that commitment, then what's to be done? And you should decide that ahead of time, decide what the mechanisms are. Um, we concluded that there are at least two types of, um, of affirmations of commitment. Uh, one kind, it could be tailored. For example, our relationship to the IAB and the IETF is pretty specific to their role and ours. Uh, similarly, with regard to the regional Internet registries that allocate Internet address space, we have a very specific responsibility there to uh, manage the top-level uh, uh, large-scale address space and then allocate uh, parts of that address space in accordance with a global agreement as to what the rules are. Uh, but uh, so those are kind of tailored. On the other hand, what about relations with governments? And we have one example of this affirmation of commitments, but it's in some cases very specific to the United States. And what we are 
uh, suggesting and speculating is that there could be a standardized affirmation of commitment that ICANN could make with any government that wished to uh, sign up to it. And again, recalling that it's bilateral and also that in this case it would be uniform and both parties would be making commitments to each other and that there would be a uniform mechanism for dealing with uh, the potential, um, the possibility that one or the other of the parties is not meeting a commitment that they expressed to meet. We even suggested that the Governmental Advisory Committee might be uh, helpful in fashioning the text of such a standard agreement between ICANN and governments. Okay. But there are other, other parties who should be part of this equation, the uh, uh, root zone server operators, for example, the country code uh, top-level domains, with whom there are some agreements between ICANN uh, and the operators, but not necessarily all of them. And so we see this um, documentation of the, uh, of the web of relationships as an ongoing process mm -hmm. to make more transparent and clear how those relationships work and how what responsibilities are undertaken by the party. So uh, we've come away uh, with a notion of a web of relationships among these various parties, some of which don't have anything to do with ICANN. So this is this idea is extensible well be outside of the ambit of uh, ICANN's responsibility, and that the expression of commitment to each other and expression of the roles and responsibilities and this notion of accountability. Uh, forms a very uh, flexible framework uh, in which to make transparent uh, all of these various relationships. It also has the um, nice property that it, since it's a mutual recognition, uh, we don't have this argument about who's in charge of what. It's actually a mutual collaborative arrangement. And I have to say that collaboration and mutual respect have been a very key part of all of the Internet's evolution over time. The other reason that this is an attractive model is that if new institutions are created or formed or some go away, it doesn't destroy the entire structure. You don't have to recompile everything. You have to change a particular uh, um, affirmation of commitments upon the creation of uh, a new party. And I remind you that we have created institutions that need. We created the Internet Architecture Board. We created the Internet Engineering Task Force and their various leadership components. We created the Internet Society. We created ICANN. These all um, emerged out of this, you know, um, this constellation of interests uh, out of need. And it's very important to recognize there may be new needs that have not yet been met that might require new institutions. Although that's not the entire report, uh, it, it's a very big theme uh, in the report. There are a set of principles that we think should inform uh, the uh, way in which commitments are expressed and made uh, and in which accountability is achieved. Uh, we also note that all of these agreements ought to be influenced by a notion of stewardship to keep the Internet open, fully connected, uh, easily accessible by everyone who wishes to partake of it. And so that, too, is a thread that goes through the report. Mm -hmm. So that's a kind of a top-level summary of a lot of what's going on, by no means everything. Uh, well, there are a set of specific recommendations that the panel makes, and I would suggest that that would be an important focus of attention. There are also a set of principles that the panel believes should be observed in the, uh, in the implementation of these recommendations. And finally, we would encourage people to look for holes. You know, what did we leave out that uh, should have been there or could have been there? Uh, we also concluded that uh, while we had a specific charter that uh, ICANN asked the panel to um, undertake, that in the course of the discussions, there had been observations made by one or another of the panel members that we thought were important to share, even if they are not uh, part of a report responding to the chart. So uh, I believe there will be at least one and possibly more than one uh, additional document, which is uh, simply a contribution to the community discussion. Uh, it, it just in order to uh, provide more uh, background or more um, flavor and color to the debates that will occur uh, in uh, Brazil and in subsequent discussions, the high-level panel meetings that will happen in Sunnylands and then uh, subsequent to the Brazil meeting, later the IGF, and then eventually the 
IT to Planet Pod, all of which, uh, in some measure or other, revolve around this whole question of internet and internet governance and how it might work. Well, the first observation I would make is that uh, it was a real pleasure to work uh, with this panel. Uh, people participated in varying amounts. Uh, the drafting party and uh, many of the subgroup chairs were intensely involved in helping to craft text and to debate ideas. Um, I think what was particularly attractive is that there was a strong element of mutual respect for other people's opinions. And even when there were disagreements, they tended to be of the form, we're all trying to get to this place and, you know, how do we get there? and different alternative ways of getting there or ways of expressing uh, a, a path to get there uh, were debated and uh, it was an extremely collaborative and cooperative environment so far uh, and I have to say that this was one of the uh, more pleasant tasks that I've ever undertaken uh, and I don't, although I don't uh, in, want to make an overt plug exactly we made use of the Google Hangout mechanism <laughs> and Google Docs, and the fact that multiple parties can edit the document at the same time, can talk to each other, can have chat rooms, can put in comments, all concurrently, made a dramatic difference in the rate at which we were able to converge on text. And I was really surprised at how well this worked. But we would have conference calls, uh, not unlike what you and I are doing now, with uh, people scattered all over the globe. Not large in numbers, you know, maybe a dozen people or or even a smaller number, but people geographically very distributed, and in spite of all that, their access to the internet was sufficient to have a very serious uh, collaborative interaction on the work of this text. So it was—it it reminded me that we're living in the 21st century.